Here we're going to look at a few examples to get you comfortable with uh, the equations of lines. Please ignore that the problem here and then on the next slide is numbered. These are just problems in a, an old worksheet that I'd created. So our objective here is to, for these four lines, L, K, J, and M, we want to find their slope, their x-intercept, their y-intercept, and the equation of the line. Well, let's go through and do the simplest part first. That is just the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. First, let's just go through and do the x-intercepts. And you might have to approximate them. So for line j, the x-intercept, by definition, is the point right there where it crosses the x-axis, negative 3, comma, 0. The x-intercept for line k is this point right here, 4, comma, 0. The line L, notice the line L runs parallel to the x-axis, so it is never going to hit the x-axis. So it has no x-intercept. So we'll just write the word none here. And line M has an x-intercept right here, which is approximately, I don't know, about 1.4 comma 0. And again, that's just an approximation. The y-intercept is just as easy. The y-intercept for line J Notice that this line runs parallel to the y-axis, so it's never going to cross the y-axis, meaning it doesn't have a y-intercept. So our answer here is none. The y-intercept for the line k is right here. That coordinate is 0, 2. Line l its y-intercept is located right here. That point is 0, 4. And line M has a y-intercept right here, which is 0, negative 2. So the x and y-intercepts, finding them when you have the graph of the line is fairly easy. The slope, we've got to do a little bit of computation. Well, the slope for line J Notice that line J is a vertical line. And if you can recall from our slope studies, a vertical line does not have a slope defined in the real number system. I'm just going to write none here. Line J does not have a slope. Line K, let's pick two points on the line K, for example, here and here, and let's do our rise over run computation. So you've got a rise amount of one, a run amount of two, so the slope would be 1 half, but remember, because the line is decreasing, the slope is then negative 1 half. For line L, we've got a horizontal line, and horizontal, horizontal lines have slope 0. Line M, let's take two points on the curve, two points that we know exactly where they fall. So this point right here, and this point right here, let's say, we know exactly where those two are. That's a rise amount of 3 and a run amount of 2. And since the line is increasing from left to right, we know the slope is positive. So the slope of line M is 3 halves, 3 over 2. Our final task now is to write the equation of the line. Line K, line L, and line M are all non-vertical, so they all have equations of the form Y equals MX plus B. We'll have to deal with line J differently. Let's go ahead and do lines K, L, and M. So line K. Line K, we've seen, has a slope of negative 1 half and has a Y-intercept of 0, 2. Negative 1 half is precisely the M value, the slope in the equation. And the B value is this 2. Notice the x-intercept does not play a role in the equation. So our, our answer is y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. For line L, the slope is 0. So we've got y equals 0 times x plus its B value is 4. So plus 4. However, people don't leave that as the equation of the line. Because 0 times x 
plus 4 is just 4. So the equation of the line is y equals 4. The equation of line L is precisely y equals 4. Line M, you've got y equals M is a slope of 3 halves times x plus, in this case, b is the negative 2. So this is minus 2. The equation of line M is y equals 3 halves x minus 2. Line J's equation can't be represented in y equals mx plus b form. But in some ways, line j is similar to L. This is, line L is completely horizontal. Line j is completely vertical. Notice this, the simplified form of line L's equation is y equals 4. And notice it goes through the y-axis, and precisely at the point 0, 4. The j Line j goes through the x-axis and precisely at the point negative 3, 0. So the equation of that line is simply just x equals negative 3. All vertical lines have an equation of the form x equals some number. Technically, all horizontal lines, even though even though they do fit in the mx plus b form, because m is 0 for them, they ultimately look like y equals a number. So you can see our horizontal line had the equation y equals 4, and our vertical line had the equation x equals negative 3, and so that form. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we are given equations of the lines instead of graphs of the lines. So we've got line P and line Q, and we want to write them in slope-intercept form and then also state what their slope is and what their y-intercept is. So to be in slope-intercept form, the key thing is y has to be totally isolated. We need to do that with each of these equations. So your first move for line P may very well be to subtract 5x from both sides which would give me negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 12. And the slope is still not negative 5 because y needs to be totally isolated. So let's divide both sides by negative 3. And don't forget that the negative 3 has to divide into each of these items according to the distributive property, giving us y equals negative 5x divided by negative 3 is 5 thirds x plus 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. So we have y equals 5 thirds x minus 4 is the slope-intercept form of line P. Let's get the slope-intercept form of line Q. Notice what, this one's got a bunch of fractions in it. Well, from our previous work when we were solving linear equations in one variable, we know that we can get rid of the fractions by multiplying by a common multiple of the denominators. And 3, 4, and 6 all go into 12. So 12 is going to multiply into the 2x over 3, into the y over 4, and into the 5, 6. Well, 12 times 2 thirds x, 3 goes into the 12 four times, and then 4 times what's left, the 2x, gives us 8x. 12 times the y over 4, the 4 divides into the 12, giving us 3. 3 times the y that's left is 3y. When 12 multiplies into the 5, 6, the 6 divides into the 12, giving us 2, and then 2 times the 5 that's left there is 10. So now this equation looks very similar to how line P started. So we've got to rewrite this so that y is totally isolated, but at least now it doesn't have any fractions. So first move, would be to subtract 8x from both sides, giving us 3y equals negative 8x plus 10. And then to fully get y isolated, we need to divide both sides by 3, giving us y equals negative 8 thirds x plus 10 thirds. This is the slope-intercept form of line Q. Now we've done all the hard work. The slope, because the, we have the equations now in slope-intercept form, the slope is precisely just this 5 thirds for line P. 
the b value for this equation is negative 4, because remember this would be written as plus negative 4. So we've got a b value of negative 4, hence the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 4. Now over for line q, we see that the slope is negative 8 thirds. And the B value in this case is 10 thirds. So the Y intercept is 0 comma 10 thirds. Look at these slopes and the corresponding Y intercepts and compare them to the original equation. You would not have been able to get these things from the original equation. Hence, slope intercept forms are so important because we can read right from them the slope and the, and the y-intercept of the line.